It's week three of the Ash Waste campaign, and we have two games going simultaneously. Ben vs. D, and Mark vs. myself. Orlock vs. Goliath, Escher vs. Outcast Cawdor. The mission is the Cargo Run, a rolling roads mission that can get dangerous. This time on JD in the Sump Sea. Ben showed up to play his Orlocks, and Dee brought his Goliath Bikers, now with a Goliath Mauler. Also this week, my good friend Mark drove into town to play with his beautifully painted Escher models. For week 3's scenario, we played the Cargo Run, a rolling road scenario with the soaring temperatures weather condition in effect. Mark's Escher randomly selected Klasmer's Highway for his gang's starting trade route, and I chose the Tubeway 1 road section to fight over. Ben picked the ore pass for the road section he and Dee would be playing for. Both Ben and myself would gain complete trade route if we won our games. The Tubeway 1 road section is in the deep wastes, and I rolled a 1 so we would be playing on ancient roads, adding an extra 2 inches onto the movement of our vehicles. The attacker in this scenario is the one who chose the scenario, so I would be the attacker and mark the defender. His one vehicle would count as carrying the cargo, and if he got away, then he would win. If I disabled his vehicle, then I would win. Using the custom 10 crew selection method, I picked my two champs, my leader, my three vehicles, and my three bikers, so that everything could move quickly to keep ahead of the rolling roads and have a chance at catching the target vehicle. Mark had an Escher gang of beautifully converted and painted bikers riding on hover bikes. He modeled the smoke trailing behind them and mounted them onto bases with bent wires so that they would look like they're floating above the ground. He had a ganger with a needle rifle and a medium vehicle made from a World War II model, which mounted a grenade launcher. This vehicle was carrying the cargo in this mission. He had three more gangers on bikes with las guns and a leader with a multi-melta along with the death maiden with a stiletto sword. Having Mark come into town was a great treat. Since moving away we don't get to play as often as we used to, and he always has such great looking models. He shows such great sportsmanship and he's a very smart wargamer. He also has his own YouTube channel, Art with Mark, linked in the description below. So I begin the game by trying to move as fast as I can. My initial thought was to get ahead of him and keep going. Try to move away, get some distance between his Escher and my hive scummers. He takes the opposite approach and immediately begins moving towards my hive scum bikers and also begins shooting them. I get lucky that some of his shots don't land. I continue to move as fast as I can to get out in front of him. I want to be in front and try and slow him down. I also try to position Enoch to cast Terrify. I get an early game scare when he shoots his grenade launcher at Enoch's vehicle. Ezekiel, my sniper champion, shoots smoke launchers from his vehicle to try and make it a bit harder on the Escher to actually hit him. Having photo goggles on a mono site, he really doesn't care about range or visibility. My shooting for the most part this game is ineffective. I knock over bikers occasionally, but don't do much real damage. Again, like the last two games, James the Great releases his bomb rats. In this game, they don't do much other than force Mark to shoot the rats instead of my gang. I'm 
meanwhile, on the other board. What's happening now? We're gonna we're gonna ram straight into here. Nice. And hundreds of pigeons flying through London with LED lights blinking. And it's strength ten. Open up and let them go, and they all. Our strength open nine. The ramming didn't result in much. The Goliath biker successfully got out of the way. And now we do the rolling roads. It was now time to make a decision on what types of dangerous roads we'd be driving on for turn two. He chose plus one, knowing the sides would be dangerous, but also knowing that giving only a plus one to the die roll would not get us any closer to the finish line. It's an interesting choice to make which modifier to choose. Do you take the more dangerous route to get there faster, or do you wait and take a chance that your opponent will kill you or the cargo before you make it to the destination? Turn two begins with me moving a bomb rat. Most of the turns of this game begin that way. Then I move the tractor again. I'm trying to stay in front of the Escher. Uh, towards this guy. Okay. Right? So I get eight plus a D6. No, it's a D3. Correct route. No. Oh, so she's gonna go 11. Uh, one strength. So you're not gonna get in the base. Two damage. That's, but that's, that's fine. You can still attack me and I cannot yeah, attack back. Exactly. Now his Death Maiden lines up a charge and has a versatile weapon, meaning the Death Maiden doesn't even need to get into base contact with my fighter, avoiding any reaction attacks. Two inches. Right there, just to make myself seem all boss. This sounds good. That's right. a good idea. So, dead, let's see what happens. Yellow is the first number. Uh, 25, that seems okay. I'm sure she'll be fine. His ganger on the far flank makes a move and zooms out from the open into cover behind the large ship, taking up a firing position with the needle rifle. The vehicle, the Smoky Crow's Nest, will continue moving and trying to use smoke to its advantage. Um, through the smoke! Yep. Driving through the smoke! This cat and mouse game continues with us taking pot shots at each other and me trying to race the Escher until I take one too many shots and a card is played. Ezekiel Magborg with his sniper rifle is going to shoot your leader. Uh, hits. Uh, so make your... Oh, what is this? I'm going to jink. Jink, a term that used to be used in almost all 40k games many years ago. It has survived in an Escher vehicle tactics card in Necromunda. It's very similar to the old rule. The fighter makes an initiative check, and if passed, then it's not hit by the shooting attack. A six is rolled. The fighter jinx. His next activation, he moves the vehicle, lines up a grenade launcher shot on the bomb rat. The bomb rats have been great distractions and will occasionally do something. He rolls to hit. It hits the rat. We consult the rules and determine that the rat simply goes away if hit. Yeah, kill the rat. That's all you had to do. You just, you just gotta hit rats and they go away. I'm gonna cast Terrify. Enoch is gonna shoot at the closest biker. Who is this one right here? Bullium. Bullium? Yes, Bullium will be tried to be terrified. Unlike the previous game, Terrify didn't work as well. The Escher didn't care so much about being terrified. Get right up in your face here. Yep. Turn three, and the Escher leader tries to shoot her melt gun. She's got her melt gun. It's at short range, within six inches. Missed with a one. And she's out of ammo! And she's out of ammo!
Meanwhile, the other table is moving everything back eight inches due to the rolling roads rules. It must be a new turn for them. Our turn three then proceeds similarly to the previous two turns. I continue to be in front of the Escher and we continue to take pot shots. Nothing much happens this turn and I pop a bunch of smoke, which doesn't really matter either. Turn 4 then begins like the previous turns, but will foreshadow what is about to happen on turn 5. This turn, the Escher take out another one of my fighters. I continue moving my vehicles to stay ahead of the Escher. My tractor moves, then turns. It's at this point I'm trying to figure out how I could make a charge with my leader, Enoch. I feel like you could take out one of the Escher in close combat. The bomb rat is shot and killed by the flanking biker behind the boat. I launch more smoke and then move forward as far as I can to try and line up a shot. A shot that ult ultimately misses. The Death Maiden then again makes herself known. She charges, stays at least an inch away, and then kills one of my bikers. I then release another bomb rat, hoping again that it will be a good distraction. The Escher vehicle moves, and the final turn is upon us. Turn 5, and Mark decides it's time for this game to end. He chooses plus 2 on the chart and rolls a 5, ending the game after this turn. The plus two choice means that not only are the sides of the table cliffs, but if anyone moves less than eight inches, then they're taken out of action. The Escher now smell blood. They move up close to the track tour with Enoch on it, and James the Great decides to turn around and come flying back at breakneck speeds to try to defend his leader. I do the spin action and turn around 180 degrees, which also requires me to make a handling check. I then use the tactics card One with the Road, which allows me to auto-pass that handling check. It's at this point that things really started to go wrong for my gang. I begin to understand just why light vehicles are so cheap. Their armor is wafer thin. A toughness of three with a five plus save and only one hull point make them susceptible to even the lowly las gun. And a las gun is exactly what does in the tractor. It is wrecked and both Enoch and Ezra are thrown from the vehicle, but luckily aren't hurt. The tractor ends up with a persistent rattle, which only means that future lasting damage table rolls will have a plus one applied to them. Somehow, Ezra takes the charge and responds by knocking down the Escher leader with a stub gun shot. The pincushion is then charged by the Death Maiden. She rolls lots of dice as usual and wrecks the pincushion, throwing James the Great from the wreck. Again, luckily James is unhurt. The pincushion suffers a loss of power on the lasting damage table and is now at a minus one movement. 
I had already upgraded it with nitro burners, so its movement goes down to 7 from 8. It's at this point we survey the table and decide to call it a game. Mark wins the cargo run. Unfortunately, I had to take Elijah Helwick, one of my biker gangers, to the dock after the battle where he succumbed to his injuries. This is the end of the first part of the campaign. Between now and next week's game is downtime. I took the money earned from this mission and the 250 credits from downtime, and I bought four new gangers. I used three of the extra hive scum models from last mission as three of my four new gangers. The fourth will be using Elijah's old respirator and Cawdor polearm slash reclaimed auto gun. At this point in the campaign, Mark's Escher hold Klasmar's highway, Dee's Goliaths picked up the ore pass, and Mark also took the tube way one. Mark denied me the opportunity to have two trade routes, and D denied Ben the opportunity for two trade routes also. Next time, we play the breakdown mission, so look for that video next week. And as always, thanks for watching. Please, like and subscribe.